Well, hi there. You're back here with Barry. And uh, Dr. Rashid Buttar released another video. I got a copy of it last night from another subscriber that forwarded it in. And big thanks goes out. Listen, I just want you to sit back, have a listen, because it's nothing but additional pinpoint bullseye factual information. Okay, watch and we'll talk to you on the other side. We have undercover footage off the World Health Organization in their private forum talking about how the confidence level among the physician community worldwide is decreasing. The WHO is trying to decide on a strategy, a marketing campaign. When you have to have a marketing strategy to convince the health professionals, those who have been appointed to, to safeguard our health and the chil our children's health, you know that there's something that doesn't smell right. The Centers for Disease Control's own data shows that 1% of the, of the population of the planet currently has autism. The current world's population is 7.7 .7 billion. 1% of that is 77 million. According to the CDC's own data, 77 million children and young adults have autism on our planet right now. In 29 years to go from 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 30, there's something wrong. Look at polio and then look at the incidence of DDT. Now, most chemical compounds that have been introduced into the global economy, it takes of the, of the dirty dozen, the 12 most toxic substances that are banned across every nation on the planet, those 12, before they became banned, had been used in global commerce for a minimum of 50 years, most of them for over 70 years before it was determined how dangerous they were. Now, back then during the smallpox era, there was a chemical called DDT, and DDT is today considered one of those dirty dozen. Nobody uses it. It's considered toxic and it's considered banned from all nations. But there were ads in the United States with children saying, flies don't land on me because I've had my DDT. So when people say, uh, what's that got to do with polio? The incidence of polio, if you graph it, and the incidence of the use of DDT, polio was six months behind the incidence of DDT. So when you would see DDT levels peaking, you would see polio peak six months later. Then you'd see DDT uh, usage dropping, you'd see polio six months later drop. Now, this is a very interesting observation. I don't know whether that means that DDT was causing it, but certainly smallpox vaccine was not the reason that smallpox was eradicated. I believe it was because we stopped using DDT. So this, this, this is a political thing, but when it comes down to the aspect of vaccinations, people say, Dr. Buttar, you're an anti-vaxxer. I am not anti-vaccine because if there was a vaccine that didn't have all those preserves in there that are highly toxic, like mercury and formaldehyde and nickel, and didn't have the DNA addicts that are, that are added to increase a uh, reaction, uh, if they didn't have various human cell lines, mutated human cell lines, DNA from other species like dogs and monkeys with other viral loads in there, if they didn't have all those things in there and they actually were given at a time when a child could seroconvert, because we give these vaccines on the first day of the planet, Yet, a child's immune system can't even seroconvert, can't even mount an immune response till six months to a year of age. So now we've got all these components and then using things like mercury, the body can't even eliminate it till the alimentary system is fully developed, which takes about a year for the alimentary tract to develop. But if they made a vaccine that didn't have DNA addicts, didn't have mutated human cell lines, didn't have adjuvants, didn't have mercury, nickel, formaldehyde and other contaminants and other things that are dangerous that suppress the immune system didn't have glyphosate which now they have glyphosate in there they have roundup the weed killer in vaccines if they didn't have all that stuff in there and it would actually given at a time when a child could actually sir convert like, like at a year a year and a half of age and it didn't cause any harm i would be all for it i would be totally for it we have over 7400 doctors that have reached out over the last month so we weren't able to get everybody on here and you know people are busy and scheduled so I believe that there's thousands and thousands of doctors worldwide that feel this way. They're just not being represented because the media is definitely trying to prevent this information from getting out. There's a lot of people that feel this and understand this. So it's just, it's one of those, one of those incredible moments when we start realizing that we are the vast majority, but because we're being singled out, because we're not being because we're not getting a voice or a fair voice, it is being 
prevented, the information is being prevented from being disseminated to the world so that the question can be asked, why is this happening? Censorship is always something that an authoritarian dictatorship type government would want to when they want to prevent the dissemination of information. So rather than even trying to give a reason for the censorship, let's ask the millions of people out there that may be seeing this, why would anybody censor facts and truth about injury that's been caused by something that has been promoted for the last 20 or 30 years as the, as the single most important safety component for our children, yet has caused more injuries, more documented injuries, you know, millions of children being maimed worldwide. Why would you want to stop the conversation? In the 1980s, the vaccine industry came to Congress and said, we need help. The vaccine industry came in the 1980s and asked for a bailout. President Reagan at the time said, this is not a good idea, but Congress went ahead and bailed them out. And the reason that they, the reason that they gave was we have so many lawsuits, we cannot make vaccines. We cannot afford to be in business. So the government bailed them out and the government then took over the oversight with a mandate that every two years they would do safety studies on different vaccines. Up to this point, 2020, now we're talking about 40, 50 years later, because so, this was like in the 70s and the 80s, and let's just say in the last 40 years. Guess how many safety studies have been done by the US government to assess the efficacy and safety of vaccines? I'll, I'll save you some time, zero. So the, the mandate that the government took over to do oversight has been, has been totally ignored. Now, and it's not that they did it on purpose. I think they just, like the government, they dropped the ball. Now, let's say that I file a lawsuit against a vaccine manufacturer. Guess who the defendant is on that lawsuit when it's filed with the government? The defendant is not that vaccine manufacturer. It's HHS, it's the Health and Human Services. It's the US government that you're suing because of a vaccine injury. And guess who's defending the US government? The Department of Justice. So you, when you have a child that's been injured, you're fighting the Department of Justice. You're fighting the US government. And remember, the Department of Justice is supposed to be making sure that justice is being done. Instead, they are fighting to defend the health and human services from somebody who's been injured. Now, does that make any sense whatsoever? Well, anytime you watch a video from Dr. Buttar, you know it's going to be uh, loaded with facts. Listen, I'm going to close real quick. I want to just, while I'm talking to you, in case our good subscribers do forward this, I'm going to leave this up while I talk to you just for a minute or so and explain these are the survival rates when you do the nets in terms of total population versus people that have been affected and that have, you know, not died, you know. And you take a look at... In Canada, where I'm from, the survival rate's 99.985% of the population. In Dominican Republic, where I live now, look at these percentages, United States, United Kingdom. If you look at these percentages, and then again, we go back to our original question, does the actions warrant the threat? Clearly not. So then if we take a look at this, and how anybody would even be able to dispute a chart, okay? So when we're talking about the current pandemic threat in terms of actual death, about the seriousness of it, okay? Which all the facts prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's political and it's an economic crash on purpose. Secondly, you start the vaccine programs, okay? You take a look back in the 70s when they started to become routine, and you just take a look right here in autism, right here, okay? Before vaccine, after vaccine. I, I, I don't know what more. I don't know what, you can't offer a person with a rational mind you can do the same chart with asthma. You can do, what about, Cancer in youths, cancer in children. I mean, it just on and on and on. Polio. And what happened with six months later, as the vaccine was giving, look, DDT. They were actually, even in the videos, a matter of fact, oh, the flies get on me because I've taken my DDT. They used to spray it on people. 
Look, you can go back to doctors and heart surgeons telling you to smoke camels because they're better for your health than any other brand. None of this should surprise. The only thing that should surprise the rational mind is why we keep getting hoodwinked over the same beats. Anybody who is ignorant enough put what is proposed into their bodies deserves the diseases and the perils that follow. I'm sorry. There's no other, there's nothing more that can be said. Just like all those who do not take it, myself included, what happens to us is our own fault. Okay, I'll gladly live. Till next time, it's old Barry and DR. Appreciate everybody passing around. This one's an excellent Dr. Putar. I don't think there's a better spokesman. I had daughters pretty excellent too, but my God, Judy, Dr. Judy, Nikowitz, um, my goodness, there's some good people on our team too. Okay, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.